Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Network Plus certification training course, the only training course made with all natural ingredients. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about the standards that we have created around wiring, cabling up our networks. Well, for this comes from our Network Plus certification section 2.4 where we need to, given a scenario, we need to differentiate and implement appropriate wiring standards. We have something called 568A. We have something called 568B. There's straight through cables. There's crossover cables. There are rollover cables and loopback connections. So we're going to talk about every single one of those. Let's start by discussing this idea of wiring standards and where this came from. Whenever you put up the cables, you plug everything in, you can really have nothing happening on your network because the cabling part of your network was not done properly to begin with. And generally, you want to test your cables a lot prior to the implementation. The challenge that we have is if you look at the connectors on our cables themselves, you'll notice connectors are very similar, whether it's a loopback cable, whether it's a rollover cable, whether it's an Ethernet straight through, whether it's a crossover. The connectors themselves to our human eyes look exactly the same. The only difference is how it's wired inside of that jacket. So it's very useful to have a cable mapping device like this one that can show you which connections are made to what ports on the connectors themselves. You want to get a really good cable person. Doing cabling really is an art. And some people are very, very good artists. Some people are OK artists. So you want to look around and make sure that if somebody's putting in a lot of cables for you, that they're really good at what they're doing. You'll often be asked, oh, are your networks terminated with 568A or are they terminated with 568B? So we need to understand what those two differences are. These come from standards that were created by the EIA TIA 568B, these pin assignments are associated with eight conductor, 100 ohm balanced twisted pair cabling. And that's the twisted pair that we commonly see in our networks today where you have the RJ45 connectors on both ends. Now, all the real difference is between these two are the pin assignments which pins go to which connection at both ends. There really is no other difference. There's no difference in the cabling. There's no difference in the connector. All the differences are associated with the pins. Uh, these specifications are really specific um, to, in 568A, they say use these pinouts for horizontal cabling and use other pinouts for everything else. But not everybody follows that policy. Almost everybody traditionally in the United States, for instance, has used 568B. It's a standardization made very popular by AT&T. Now, it doesn't matter which one you choose, whether in your organization you're using A or whether you're using B. The important thing is that everybody's just using the same thing. So it's not going to hurt anything depending on what you're doing. And really, you go with what anybody's traditionally done. Now, what are you using in your environment now? Well, we'll just continue to use that in your environment. You really can't terminate both sides. You can't say we'll put A on one side and B on the other. That's not going to work, and you're going to find out why in just a moment. So make sure that you figure out which way it's terminated in your environment and use that termination type. Here's the difference in 568A and 568B. And it's all about color. So what you have are these eight connections. We have this RJ45 cable flipped over so that we can see the conductors and we can see the cables that are underneath. Each one of these from left to right is numbered one through eight. And if we look at the colors of the cables, the EIA TIA 568A uses these types of colors, pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now notice that one and two are a pair, seven and eight are a pair. And notice that the pairs in the middle are separated. You've got these orange, for instance, that is three and six, and another pair that's four and five. So your pairs don't go just one pair after another. They're split up a little bit. And they're split up similarly on the 568B. There's a pair on the outside. And there's the pair on the very middle. And then you wrap around on pins three and six to have a separate pair right there. And we do that to separate the signal out a little bit, minimize crosstalk. Very common to see that. And since we have standardized on those two, they must be working pretty well for us. The difference, of course, is colors and the colors that are being used in this environment. In fact, if we look at this cable right here, we can see orange on one side, brown on the other side, and green is wrapped around the blues in the middle. So this is wired with an EA, uh, TIA EIA 568B configuration. It is not an A configuration. So we want to make sure on the other side that we make sure the connector is exactly the same with exactly the same colors on the other side of this cable. Another type of cable you may see used, especially in Ethernet networks, is an Ethernet crossover cable. Now, the crossover cable is one that's pinned a very specific way. 
This is not just crossing over every other cable and it's done. Normally, when you connect two devices to each other, you're connecting them in this straight through mode where pin one goes to pin one, pin two goes to pin two, conductor three goes to conductor three, and so, so on and so forth using these appropriate colors. A crossover cable is essentially taking the transmit side and reversing it over to the receive side so that you can directly connect two Ethernet devices without requiring a hub, a switch, or any other type of Ethernet connection in the middle. And by doing that, you can see that pin 1 goes to pin 3, pin 2 goes to pin 6, and then 3 goes to 1, and 6 goes to 2. Everything else stays exactly the same. Pins 4, 5, 7, and 8 still remain straight through. The only thing you're really changing is 1 to 3 and 2 to 6 on both sides of this. And once you make those changes, then you can plug two Ethernet connections in directly to each other, and they'll notice link on both sides, and you can communicate without requiring any hub or any switch. So that can really come in handy in a pinch. Another type of cable is called a rollover cable. Now, a rollover cable is not a crossover cable, so keep that in mind. Most people even refer to this as a Cisco console cable, referring to the manufacturer Cisco and the type of connections they expect to have. But this was really something that was a standard that was created by a gentleman called Dave Yost. This was called really the Yost Serial Device Wiring Standard. You can still go out to Yoast.com and look at this. And his idea was that what if we had a single RJ45 connection on both ends or an adapter that changed our serial port to RJ45, and then we used a single cable type regardless of what we were plugging in, whether it was a modem, whether it was a router, whether it was a switch connection, whether it was a printer or any other serial device on our network, we could just use the same cable with exactly the same wiring, which means I could even unplug a printer cable and plug it into a modem, for instance, and it would work just fine. It's a great idea. And he used this idea of a rollover where pin one connected to pin eight, pin two to seven, pin three to pin six, and so on and so forth. So you essentially flipped one side of the cable completely over. You rolled over one side of the cable from the other. And as long as they were rolled over, we were just fine. The idea was that this would be just a standard RJ45 to allow any serial connection to be able to work. And as long as you wired everything this way in your environment, it worked very well. It worked so well that even companies like Cisco said, this will be the standard that we use when people want to plug into our serial devices. Unfortunately, even the best of intentions don't exactly work out the way you planned. Uh, Cisco doesn't have that same standard across all of their serial cables, but fortunately, most do follow this standard. Another type of cable connection, something called a loopback plug or a loopback cable. This is used a lot when you're testing physical ports. You want to send information out of the port and see how much information comes back into the port. We're looking to see if the, what's coming in is matching what's going out. And if we're having problems there, we know there may be a hardware problem associated with that device. This is also useful for fooling your operating system. When you were originally installing Windows NT back in the day, Windows NT expected you to have a network connection available. And if you didn't have a network connection, well, then it wouldn't work. It wouldn't install properly. So we plugged a loopback plug into the Ethernet connection, and everything installed the way you would expect. You see these look this way. This is a commercial one. Uh, this would plug into serial connections that use a 9-pin or 25-pin or network connection, whether it's Ethernet or T1. This happens to be one of those network connection loopback cables. These are not crossover cables. These are a little bit differently. It's really just a plug. It's really just a cable where we're looping out and coming right back in again. You can see we're looping out of pin 1 and coming right back into pin 3. We're looping out of pin 2 and coming right back into 6. So this is a very common RJ45 Ethernet and a serial loopback plug that we've created that does both of those. There's a, a great website where you can make your own Ethernet crossover modem, null modem, and rollover cable and have different connectors you can put on the end of it. It's called spacehopper.org slash 5 dash n dash one. And uh, that's one that I did. So you can create these very, very tiny patch connectors to plug right into a coupler and have just a single Ethernet cable that you can create many different kinds of cables out of. So let's review some of these cable types, these connector types that we have. Our first question is, which cable type allows you to directly connect Ethernet devices? There was one pinout, one cabling standard that we looked at. And that was our crossover cable. Another question is, what troubleshooting cable type will redirect outgoing traffic right back into the computer? Well, that was one of the last ones we looked at, and that was a loopback connector type. And finally, which wiring standard provides a uniform method for connecting serial devices? There was one standard. If you recall, his name was Dave Yost, and he created the rollover or the Yost standard cable. 
So there are some examples of some connector types you're going to run into, whether it's a 568A or B, a straight through cable, a crossover cable, a rollover, or a loopback. For many more Network Plus certification videos, for our message boards, to send me an email, and much more, visit our website, freenetworkplus.com.